premium SUVs, they have every base covered. They're comfy, practical, capable, packed full of the latest technology and let the world know you've made a success out of your life. But which would you choose between the new Mercedes GLE, the new BMW X7, the new Volkswagen Touareg and the definitely not new Audi Q7? Oh yeah, I've got all the German heavyweights right here, though I think I'm at risk of coming down with Teutonic Plague. To help you decide which of these cars is right for you, I'm going to critique their design. Car for the people, more of a Volkswagen. Compare their interiors. Hate it. See how practical they are. Don't like manual labour. And find out what they like to drive. I like it. Before we go any further, you may notice some of the colours of the cars and my outfits may change a little as some of the clips were filmed on different days due to uh, reasons. Anyway, let's kick off this review by comparing the car's prices. The Mercedes GLE starts from just under £56,000. The BMW X5 starts from £57,500. The Volkswagen Touareg is the cheapest car here. It starts from £49,000, whereas the Audi Q7, that starts from £54,000. Now, there are a few things you need to know. For instance, the Mercedes is the only car that the entry-level version has a four-cylinder engine. The rest of them all get six-cylinder engines right across the range. And then there's the price you're actually going to pay at a dealer. So if you click up there on the pop-out banner to go to CarWow, you can save an average of almost £3,000 off the BMW, £5,500 off the Volkswagen, £6,000 off the Mercedes, and a whopping nine and a half grand off this Audi Q7. So make sure you check that out. Maybe one of the reasons for the huge discount on the Audi is that it just looks a little bit plain. The Q7 isn't an ugly thing and it's not a pretty thing either. It's more just looks like a thing. In fact, it's sort of just like a big estate car rather than a proper butch SUV. That's my impression of butch, by the way. Butch. The BMW, on the other hand, is far more noticeable, but not exactly for the right reasons. This X5 has the snout of a pig and the rump of a hippo, but I'll tell you this, it's got plenty of presence. In fact, it looks like the kind of vehicle that the baddies will get out of in some Michael Bay movie. The truth is that baddies would do better driving around in something a little less conspicuous, something like this Volkswagen. The Touareg is a bit of an in-betweener. It's not as in your face as the BMW, yet it's not as drab as the Audi. It's more of a car for the people, more of a Volkswagen. Ha ha ha. Yeah, very good me. However, if you want to rise above other folks, then you need a status symbol, and that's where the Mercedes comes in. This isn't a car for people who like to keep quiet about their success. I mean, look at it, it's really in your face. It's muscular, it's shiny, and it has not one, but two Mercedes badges. And this one down here is as big as a dinner plate. But it's not just the outside of the GLE that's a little bit showy. The inside is too. The interior design is generally pretty nice. It's quite an interesting shape and you've got these big tough grab handles there. There's lots of shiny, shiny, shiny about the place as well. I also like this. When you turn up the heater, the ambient lighting glows red. When you turn it down for cooler, it glows blue. Look at that, isn't it nice? And the materials generally are quite nice as well. So you've got leather it on the dash and open pour wood down here. But there are a few bits and pieces that just feel cheap down here, all scratchy. The light controls are cheap as well. And the worst thing though is this rear view mirror. I mean, it's horrendous. It's like the one out my old Fiesta. The VW's interior is even more hit and miss than the Mercedes. There's certain things I really like about the interior of this Touareg. For instance, these screens just dominate it. They seem really, really high-tech and make the cabin feel nice and modern. I just like the stitching effect you've got on the top of the dash. It's all squidgy materials, and this looks kind of smart as well. But really, some of the bits and pieces just don't cut the mustard. I mean, the plastic's down here are all cheapy, cheapy scratchy here and here, and some on the doors as well. So the steering wheel, it's not really any better than that that you get in a, a Polo. Hmm. Underneath the skin, the Audi actually shares many of its mechanical parts with the Volkswagen. However, inside it feels noticeably more expensive. The interior of this Q7 is all very nice. So, squidgy materials, quality materials, soft touch here, soft touch there, sensibly laid out. It's nice. 
The thing is, it's just starting to feel its age a bit. You know, I remember when this car first came out, it was dead modern. Since then, it's aged and so have I. I don't know, it's even gone a bit grey. I mean, look at this, right? A pop-up screen. <laughs> you don't see that anymore. You also won't see me criticise the BMW's interior anymore, as really, there's not much to fault. I really like the interior design of this BMW X5. And everything is just so high quality. All the materials are soft and squidgy, even down here on the front of the glove box and down here on the door bins. And it's all very solid. Layout is really clear, easy to use. I like the fact that you've got these metallic buttons on here. It just feels expensive. Another good thing is this. Look, you've got this pod here, which has all the controls for like the driving stuff. This trim pattern here. I don't know if it's just me, but it's kind of like playing tricks on my eyes and it's just making me have a bit of a migraine. I don't know. Really, really nice car to sit in this. The BMW also leads the field with its infotainment system. As standard, you get a widescreen display and digital dials. It's all very easy to use either via the touchscreen, click wheel, voice commands, or even gesture controls. It's just a shame that while it has Apple CarPlay, there is no Android Auto. The next best infotainment system is the Mercedes one, which does have both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Also, its standard fit dual screens are nice and bright, though the operating system isn't quite as easy to use as the one in the X5. Meanwhile, the system in the Audi is almost as good. Also, the interface is a little bit dated and less sophisticated than the other two, but it does have the best digital driver's display of the bunch. The digital dials you get in the VW is close behind, but you have to pay extra for them, over £3,500. However, that premium does also get you a larger main central screen, as is fitted to this car. And you're going to want it because the standard system looks a little bit budget. Here it is. Yeah. Thankfully, you don't feel like you're on an economy drive in the back of the VW. There's just so much space here in the back of the Touareg. Look at this. Loads of room. Loads, loads, loads. And I can slidey, slidey and recliney, recliney. I just wish you could recline a bit further than this, though. Other than that, no complaints. Oh, apart from one, this is a five-seater only. If you want seven seats, you're going to have to look elsewhere. And elsewhere could be the BMW. There's plenty of room here in the back of the X5, and I think these seats are super comfortable, especially with this upgraded leather. It's just lovely. Lots of headroom. Yeah, plenty of room for my feet. I can slide my feet under the seat in front if it's jacked up slightly. There is one thing, though. Unlike the other cars, you can't recline or slide these back seats. They're just as they are. However, if you want a third row of seats, you can pay extra for those. They're £1,400. If you do have the X5 in seven seat form, though the upgrade really isn't worth it as the space in the third row is quite poor. And it's the same story with the Mercedes. Well, as you can see, it's pretty roomy back here, isn't it? And if you have the seven seat version of this GLE, you can slide the seats in the middle row forwards and backwards. You don't have that on the five seat version. They are fixed. It's a shame that they're only split two ways, but that's fine. Now, speaking of the seven seat mode, if you want to get into the very back, you do it electrically, but it's such a faff. Press that button on there. Wait an age for this to do its thing. Come on, come on, do your thing. Oh my God. Stay with the video, please. Stay with us. So boring. And then when you put it back, come on, go back, go back. You have to keep your finger on the button to do it. Right, right. Once again, it takes ages. You still with me? Surprised. And then you have to use the controls to move it back to where you want it. It doesn't go back automatically. It's, oh, I think this is a rubbish system. It's rubbish. I hate it. And this would be an issue for me on all but the entry-level 2-litre diesel. You see, the larger engine models of the GLE in the UK all come with the annoying seven-seat configuration as standard. And to be brutally honest, the third row in the Merc is really tight and pretty much unusable to all but small children. And that brings me on to the Q7, which is a seven-seater no matter what. But with this Audi, that is not a problem at all. Just look at this. This is absolutely brilliant back here. It's just so much room, can really stretch out. And, oh yeah, I can recline the back seats even more if I want to. This is lovely to travel in the back of. And check this out, right? You can move the seats forward. You might be thinking, why would you want to do that? Well, even if I slide them there, I'm going to slide this one as well because they look, they move individually. Look at this. I can jump into the rear. Not the easiest to get into the back of, but look, the third row of seats, which comes as standard. 
and just push this back up. And then I actually have all right knee room back here. Well, it's not so good for his headroom, but still, kids will be fine. The Audi is also the best car here for carrying three people in the middle row at once, as each person has an individual chair and the car's body is nice and wide. Next is the BMW, which is also wide, though the person in the middle may find the centre seat a little bit hard and high. The outer two passengers will be slightly more comfy than they would be in the GLE, though the middle seat in the Mercedes is marginally better than that in the BMW. The Volkswagen Touareg is the worst car for carrying three people in the back at once, though to be fair, it's not actually that bad. The main issue is the large hump in the floor, which does affect foot space. But really, like I said, there's not much in it. The cars are also closely matched when fitting a child seat, as they are all super roomy. However, the Audi does stand out because it's the only one here to have Isofix anchor points on each of the six passenger seats, which is quite unusual. The Q7's functionality also extends to its boot. This thing has a massive clamshell tailgate with all seven seats in place. He's still got an okayish boot, like a kind of small city run around. But if I fold these seats down, I can do the rest of it by holding these buttons down. Oh, why aren't they one touch? Anyway, there you go. Then you've got a massive boot. Look at it, it's huge. The X5's boot is also big and it's got lots of useful features too. Poshness just flows throughout this BMW X5. Even when it comes to the boots, you have a split tailgate. Lovely. And check this out. So to remove the low cover, you just press this button on here and it's just so easy to slide out. I wish it was like that on all cars. Look, it's on a gas strut. Oh yeah, it is. It's just luxurious. Look, I don't even have to shut that one. I can just do it itself. Excellent. What's less excellent is the fact the VW is the only car here which doesn't get an electric tailgate as standard. Thankfully, this particular model I'm testing does have the option fitted. But there are some other problems. I just want to show you a couple of things about this car's boot. The first is that this load cover is... I was going to say, it's an absolute pain to remove, but I've done it on the first attempt. Because you have to do it from underneath, though. Oh no, I'm struggling now. Ah, that's, that's, yeah. It's not the easiest to remove, so it can be annoying. I do like this. I can fold down the seats by putting levers here. Finally, we come to the Mercedes. Let me explain the functionality on the boot of this GLE. So I particularly like this. The parcel shelf can fit under the false floor. And you have no load lift, nice scuff plate, a few tying points there. And if I want to fold down the rearmost seats on the seven-seater version, they will just about go down, but it's all very manual. Oh, yeah. Don't like manual labour. Thankfully, the middle row is electrically operated, so you just press these buttons there, and the seats should do their thing. Come on. I pressed both buttons. I don't know why all the seats aren't going down. This system is so temperamental. It really does my head in. Maybe the issue was a one-off on this car. And anyway, the GLE's boot size is pretty decent in five-seater mode. And you can pack a little more in it than you can the X5. Though you can get a little bit more still in the Audi Q7. And a little more again in the VW, as it has the largest boot capacity out of all four cars. Anyway, that's all the sensible stuff dealt with. Now it's time to see how these posh SUVs feel when you hit the road. Starting with the ultimate driving machine. If you want the sportiest drive, the BMW X5 is the one to get. It definitely just feels more alert, more fun, but most people don't really want that. People want comfort from these kind of cars, and it does do comfort well, though this particular car doesn't ride over bumps quite as well as the others because it's got an M Sport pack on it, which includes slightly stiffer suspension setup and run flat tires, which aren't so good at ironing out imperfections in the road. There's one key area that the X5 differs from the other two cars, and that is the fact that it just feels more sporty and more fun to drive. So if you want that from your SUV, this is the car to go for. I also think it's got the best gearbox. It's really responsive and smooth. The engine's strong as well. They can be a bit noisy at times, and that noise that you heard then wasn't the actual engine itself. It was a fake engine noise being played through the speakers to try and trick you that you're not driving a diesel, whereas, yes, I am definitely driving a diesel. Another thing to note is that with this car, you feel like you're sat on it rather than in it. So it definitely has an SUV feel while having that kind of BMW alertness feel as well. I like it.
No, unlike the BMW that gets air suspension as standard, you have to pay extra for it on this Q7. Same with on the Touareg as well. Without the air suspension, it's not as comfy over bumps as the BMW. With it though, it is more comfy. In fact, I think this Q7 is one of the comfiest cars in the world to drive. It's also very quiet as well. Nice relaxing car to do long journeys in. However, the flip side is it never feels sporty in the same way that the BMW does. But do you care? Most likely, no. One thing you will care about though is the engine. The engine seems smoother in this than the BMW, but the gearbox is not as good. So you put your foot down in it, eventually takes off. It just doesn't feel as spirit as that BMW. Other than that, I do like it. It's great for just cruising about in. Underneath the skin, this Touareg is pretty much identical to the Audi. So you've got the same engines and gearbox, you've got a similar chassis. It's all very similar, but everything to do with the Touareg is just not quite so good as that in the Q7. So in terms of comfort, it's 10% less good. In terms of quietness, it's 10% less good. And in terms of badge kudos, it's 10% less good as well. That's all you need to know, really. Still a fine car, just not as fine to drive as the Audi Q7. It's pretty clear that Mercedes has focused on comfort rather than sportiness with the new GLE, which really is the right thing to do for this kind of car. And it is, it's nice and easy and relaxing to travel in. And the particular car I've got is fitted with air suspension, which does a good job of ironing out the bumps. The only problem is you can't get it normally on the 300D entry level car, though this one does have it fitted. Bizarre, I know, but that's the way it is. And you are gonna want it because the air suspension is kind of what makes this car so wafty and a joy to travel in. When you're cruising at speed on the motorway, it's also very, very chilled. You do get a bit of tire noise, but it's not too intrusive. And the engine, this two litre diesel, actually provides decent pulling power, really. It's just that when you rev it out, it does get a little bit raucous. So I suggest you spend extra and get one of the six cylinder diesels, probably do similar economy anyway, and it's not that much more expensive. And then you get the air suspension as well. Yeah, it's quite a nice, easy thing to drive. It doesn't quite stand out as the best of the bunch to drive, but it's easily good enough. So then where does all that leave us? Well, the Volkswagen Touareg is a nice enough car. It just doesn't quite have the quality feel, nor the brand image to mix it with the likes of this Mercedes GLE, which is a really lovely thing. The only problem is that it's just bettered ever so slightly by the smallest margin by this rather old Audi Q7, which is a great, great all-rounder. And don't forget, you can get it with almost £10,000 off through CarWow. So this could have the moral victory but I've got to pick the best SUV here, and I think it is this, the new BMW X5. It feels luxurious, it's got the right badge, it's spacious, it's good to drive, and that's why it wins this group test. Do you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments section. Also, please subscribe to this channel for more videos, and if you click on the deals box to the right, you can see how much you can save on a new car at CarWow, or click on the video windows below to watch another of my videos.